Hello, uh, hello, and welcome, welcome once again to another edition of AMB Animation Live. Well, I'm back. I'm back to doing these. Uh, let's get a little bit more light in here with my makeshift, <laughs> trying to make the best out of being in my parents' house, um, looking after them in the lockdown. But uh, I'm here to, after a much long bit away because of my throat and coughing and stuff like that, I couldn't do these. So um, I've been receiving lots of messages uh, with lots of questions because a couple of you were getting into these videos where I answer questions. Um, hey, how are you doing? Uh, Akao Warrior. Uh, bonjour, Eric. Uh, Life Fantasy. Hello, how are you? Um, yeah, uh, so I'm back. I'm here to do a talk about uh, a question that I received about facing rejection. Rejection in the art world, rejection in the animation world. Thank you so much. Thank you, guys. And uh, after I cover that topic, I'll, of course, hang around and uh, talk to some of you. And, uh, you know, Travis, as the, as, as the questions keep coming thick and fast, I'll try and read them as best as I can. Uh, but uh, but we got, a, we got a good question here because it's something every one of us deal with. I've dealt with it uh, all, all my life. And um, Vietnam flashback, how are you doing? And uh, I just think it's good uh, because... I want to make it clear, while, while I, I love getting all these messages uh, from, from all you guys asking me these questions, I just want to make it clear that when I talk, I talk about animation, um, <laughs> life fantasy is on the treadmill, good for you. I talk about animation with some, some um, you know, nobody is an absolute authority in anything. Uh, we've all got stuff to learn. But I do talk about animation from the point of view of an expert, an experienced professional, somebody who's act absolutely done, done, been there, done that. And I hope to share all that stuff with you. Oh, no, I've gone and deleted the note um, that I that I sent myself. Uh, never mind. I'll just go to the email. That's going to take a bit. That's that's a pain. But while I'm talking and finding that email again, um, the thing is, uh, as I talk about these things, uh, it's on an iPad, Akal. As I talk about these things uh, to do with animation and filmmaking and all those things, yes, I talk with a, with a expertise. But when I give you my views on how to deal with rejection and all these uh, motivational things and all these psychological things that people are asking me, I love it. I love giving my perspective. I love sharing my perspective. But I've got to stress, I'm not an expert, okay? I, I really love the fact that you guys uh, want to listen from me and draw strength from me, and it's amazing to share these views with everybody. I'm not an expert. It's my point of view. It's things that have helped me <coughs> get to where I am. It's not necessarily, I'm not necessarily telling you, I may talk like that because I have firm conviction in what I'm saying and what I believe in. So I might talk in this matter of fact way about everything. But when it comes to <laughs> these psychological things, these motivational things, I am not claiming any kind of authority. It's all just um, my perspective, my, my worldview, how I've got to where I am now. Okay. Um, so I'm not going to say this person's name. But, uh, but they've messaged me, they said, Hi, AMB, this is more of a psychological question for you on how to cope with rejection. Um, I know some of your viewers, including myself, may find this an uncomf uncomfortable subject, but it might take some learner animators <coughs> back onto their toes and start prioritizing. I'm a 23 white British male with autism and applied for a job application at Hallam's, it's Britain, I should know, I'm British, but <laughs> Hallamshire Hospital, I don't, even, I don't know if I said that right, and will not know if I'm going to get the job or not. <clears throat> it doesn't matter because I've volunteered there before and I'm going volunteering again in September. Anyway, my mum says not to get too optimistic. What's your advice for viewers on how to tackle rejection? Side note, keep up the good work, look good on those martial arts images, stay safe. It's very peaceful doing this as a hobby, then 3D modeling I do at college, currently studying anatomy and flexing. <laughs> stay safe. 
Okay, well, you've kind of answered your own question there, my friend, <coughs> because <coughs> you talk about on how to deal with rejection on one point, and then you talk about with, with animation and art, but then you're talking about this, you've applied for a job at the hospital, and, and you say, um, to quote you, it doesn't matter because I volunteered there before and I'm going volunteering again. It, it doesn't matter. And my answer to how to deal with rejection is to treat the thing that you're going for as if it doesn't matter. You know, it, uh, it's a difficult one to understand, but again, again, I'm going to relate it to the martial arts. Um, it's like the thing of, um, remember the film, The Last Su Samurai, you know, where he's telling him he wants to keep winning and the other man says, have no mind have no mind, be no mind. What that means is, is like, it's, it's kind of like <coughs> understanding that wanting and not wanting, to have, to have not, are on the same sides of the same coin. Um, you know, it, it is like basically with or without, you know, one or the other. They're two opposites, the same side of the same coin. So it's the one you focus on more is the one that you're more likely to end up heading towards. So there's a couple of things here. If it's important, like it's, you should, like you could say, well, if you don't care, then you don't care, then, then don't do anything at all. But that's just being too simple about it. The thing is, is you've got this passion, you've got this energy, you've got this desire, you, you want to channel it into something, okay? But then as you're channeling it into something, you're channeling all this into your energy, you're, it's this uncontrollable passion, I want, I've got to do it, I've got to have it, I've, I must do it at all costs. That, that <coughs> tends to magnify the opposite sometimes, as if the fear of not having, having, not having. And then when the fear factor creeps in, you start focusing on what if it doesn't happen? What if it doesn't happen? What if I'm laughed at? What if it doesn't work out? What if, and then your energy and passion shifts rather from going towards the goal of going, instead of going confidently towards what you're heading, you're going, you're actually walking towards it, but in a slightly different direction that's going to lead you along the wrong path, which is meaning care about it, yes, but don't care about it as if it's the be all, the end all. You know, one of the things, which again, to bring what I love about martial arts, which is why I relate it to everything that even in the art world that's taught me, is you get used to pain, okay? You get used to taking pain. You're all the time getting hit. You're all the time getting whacked. You're all the time, uh, you know, when you first start, depending on the school, you're kind of like, Oh, I don't want to get hit. I don't want to get hit. Well, when I first started, okay, and I got, I, I was a little bit more serious about it. My master threw me up against five people and just told them to kick the shit out of me. Uh, <laughs> and, and it was like, okay, but they kicked the shit out of me, but I wasn't, um, they, they obviously, you know, I survived, you know? So the thing is, it's like the next time, I was going to spar or I was going to do something. Okay, I've been there before. I've done that. I've taken a few knocks. It's all right, you know? And what I, what, what I love about that is you relate it to life. It's like you cannot get somewhere without experience. You cannot accomplish the thing you're trying to accomplish without experience. So ultimately you're going to get it wrong. It's not going to work. Things are not going to happen. You know, you're going to channel all this energy. You're going to channel all this thing into something, but you've never been there before. Now, you may get lucky. You may get it right first time. It might be a good feeling, but ultimately that's a good thing and a bad thing because it's prolonging the inevitable of that word that everybody fears, which is failure. Now, failure is nothing more than an opportunity to learn and build experience. Okay, that never happened. But, you know, how bad do you want it? Do you want it 
you just keep moving forward. Just say, okay, well, that's a necessary step that I had to take to get to where I was going to go. And I'm, you know, I'm going to continue moving in that direction. So rejection is actually help. What you should look at rejection is that rejection is kind of like shepherding you in the direction. You're all the time going there and you're all the time going there. No, 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 no. And then finally, yes, 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 I'm, I'm there. I've got there. I've, 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 I've got towards my... So you should be thankful. You should be thankful for the rejection. You know, if, 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 you know, if, if you're getting things all the time, you know, you're basically, that's a good feeling. But part of the good feeling is the struggle, is the st striving for something. If there's no effort in it, you know, it's like that saying, I love it, Ryu, Zen, victory means nothing, the fight is everything. I get it. Sometimes it feels like we're fighting forever. And it's not a fight. It's a process. It's part of the process. But you have to enjoy the process. The thing is, is <laughs> you got to think about how silly this is. OK, it's like lying in bed when you wake up and think, I don't want to. If I get out of bed, I might fall. Or if I get out of bed, something bad's going to happen. So I'm just going to keep lying here. And I'm not going to. It's not going to work that way. You have to make a move. You know, if you keep thinking about what's not happening, then that's where your mind is going to be. It's not happening. You know, if, but if you say, okay, this is going to happen. This is going to happen. I'm going to make it happen. I'm going to make it happen. So if you try and do it and it doesn't happen, you're still thinking, I'm going to make it happen. I'm going to make it happen. I'm going to make it happen. To hell with circumstances. I make circumstances. I create the circumstances. That's exactly what the way I've been, I personally live my life. It's like, okay, I'm in lockdown. Big deal. You know what? I created these circumstances. I decided to quit the film industry. I'm, you know, I'm still, I'm getting members joining my library. I I'm still able to communicate to my audience. I'm still able to talk to you guys. I'm still able to make tutorials. I'm still able to make my films. I'm still able to do all those kind of things. So it's like basically, ultimately, um, the, you know, I've created these circumstances and they're working out for me right now. They might not be working out for other people, but then other people could be saying in this lockdown, okay, I've lost my job. I don't have anything. I've got all this time alone with myself. I've got all this time to think about what I'm going to do in the next phase of my life. You know, there's always an opportunity and rejection. Rejection is an opportunity for you to stake stock. Rejection is an opportunity for you to say, whoa, 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 whoa. OK, I wanted that. I didn't get it. Now, let me think. Should I do I really want it? Should I go for it again? Should I go for that again? Or is it what I really want? Is that what I really want? If it's what you really want, then yes, go for it again. You know, you like the taste of it. You know, I came so close. What's that song by Linkin Park? I got so far, but in the end, it doesn't even matter. Nothing matters when you're dead. So make it worthwhile when you're living, you know? Make it worthwhile. I'm going for it, and that's what I'm going to do. You know, I've mentioned it a few times before. When I was young, when I was a teenager, I like this one girl, okay? And this one girl I was just obsessed with, and I carried a candle for that girl for about 13, 14 years. And all I would do was just live my life in remorse, in regret. Oh, oh, and I was so afraid to even ask her. I don't even think she even knew that I liked her, to be honest with you. It's just like I was so afraid. Oh, what if she says no? What if it's just, it's, I've been there. It's paralysis. I'm so glad that, I, I, it's funny because like when it was other things in my life, when it was like doing my animation or doing my martial arts, I went for it. But for some reason, we've all got something that, that builds this kind of fear factor, overwhelming fear factor. And I guess for me as a young guy, it was girls. And I was just afraid. And one day, 
as I was on my personal uh, development journey, after I'd become a black belt and after I'd gone through all these things and after I did all these things, I decided to hunt that girl out on the internet. No lie, no lie. I was in my, in my late twenties. I was still hung up. I decided to hunt this girl out on the internet and I just guessed the email address, okay? Hotmail, some, her, whatever. I got a reply. Oh, I remember you, this, that, this, that. And in the end, I asked. <laughs> after all those years, I asked. You know, after it, she probably thought I was a crazy freak. But you know what? I was doing it for myself. I was doing it to give myself closure so I could move forward. And you know what? I learned a valuable lesson. Uh, to, to cut a long story short, you know, it didn't work out. And it was never meant to work out. But you know what? It's a great story to tell. It's a great story to tell. And it's something that I carry with me as a valuable lesson in life learned about fear, failure, fear, rejection. And I say to myself, you know what? Insanity is repeating the same process over and over again. And I'm so glad that I've learned from that progress because now whenever I see what I want, I go for it and I don't hesitate. You know, again, using the martial arts scenario, if you're there, you see the you see the opening, you go for it. You be direct, you be powerful. If you kind of hesitate, if you kind of like go in with a with a weak blow, you know, you're not going to hit your target. Plain and simple. You got to be firm, you got to be direct, you got to just simply go for the thing that you want. And if it doesn't work out, if you get burned, if something doesn't happen, to what your intent is, it is a lesson well learned. That's what I have to say about rejection. That's, that's all there is to say about rejection for me. It's like, so ultimately, I, I, I think I've made my point. I'm not going to keep carrying on. I could come up with so many other metaphors and so many um, different ways that these things go, but it's all going around the same thing. It's basically like, Everything is a win-win situation. You know, when you're, when you're winning, great. When you're losing, you're learning. And for me, learning beats, you know, it's a last, learning is more of a lasting experience as far as I'm concerned. Because yes, the, the, the ecstasy of victory is great, but it's short-lived. But whenever you've learned something, it might not feel nice, but boy, does it, you know, long-term. I'm always about the long-term. Boy, does it help you in the long term. Now, to cap that, I'm going to give, I'm going to read out a lovely message that I got, and then I'm going to take some questions from you guys before I go. I'm going to read out a lovely message that I got from somebody who recently joined the Real Animator Training Library. And this message, basically, is, is kind of covers this whole rejection thing, because this person obviously was dealing with confidence, for, for, I mean, this person's older than me, but they were dealing with confidence for a fair bit of their life. And they finally plucked up the courage to do something. So it's, you know, I think it ties in. So I think it's, I, I should read it. <coughs> Again, I'm going to, I'm not going to share his, his, his name. Um, just to let you know about my personal background and why I subscribe to Real Animator Training. I'm almost 45 <coughs> and I work, uh, for the civil aviation. I'm not going to disclose which country. So nothing to do with animation. Okay. But my love for animation dates back to long ago. As for any kids. As for any kids. I started with Disney features. Looney Tunes and Japanese animation. But since my drawing skills were completely non-existent. I had the poorest grades in the drawing class. It never occurred to me that I could draw. Let alone animate. As grown-ups said, it was supposed to be a gift, something that you have or have not. Then one day, you, so there you see the social conditioning, you know, letting others, that's a good thing to do with uh, rejection, putting too much value into what other people think, whether they're loved ones or whether, if I post that thing and everybody laughs at it or I get too many thumbs down or somebody criticizes it, maybe I'd better not post it, you know, so... That's, that's an important point. Then one day in my 20s, I watched and loved Tim Burton's Nightmare Before Christmas, you and me both, <laughs> and bought the making-off book, you and me both. <laughs> uh, it struck me a revelation. 
There were people making these things, and if others could do it, I could do it. A few years later, during a travel in the U.S., and other, another revelation in a library, there was a how-to book saying that anyone could learn to draw. So he got his Ratatouille moment there, I think. <laughs> it was just a gift, after all. You could learn it. And I bought it and started to learn. On a side note, I, I'm not really into Ratatouille, uh, but I do like that anyone can cook thing. I, I agree with that. I, I do like that. Um, it opened the gate. Um, and then I became obsessed with drawing <coughs> and animation and techniques that were used in MGM, Warner, Disney Studios to create those wonderful animated movies. Of course, with the family and kids and my real work. So he's balancing it all, you know. There were many periods during which I was drawing less or not at all. I tried all possible techniques to do animation, 3D vector cut out, but the results were not satisfying. The, there was something missing. Having read the books on the nine old men and the 12 principles, I knew deep within myself that these techniques were only false shortcuts that led to nowhere. I knew that there was only one way, the real thing, the hand-drawn animation. Uh, but I thought it was unreachable, an impossible dream with my poor drawing skills, despite the small progress I had made. I hope like you, you, you're taking this in because one thing I love about this guy's message <coughs> is, is he keeps running himself down, okay? But there's an underlying persistence in there, okay? There's an underlying persistence. He keeps saying, they said no, I have poor drawing skills, I have poor this... But if you look, he keeps going on and on and on and on and on. So he's going through the whole rejection process, you see, which is why I think this is a good letter to parallel with the letter I got. Uh, but thought it was unreachable, an impossible dream with my poor drawing skills, despite the small progress I had made. However, there are things you simply cannot flee. This would... This call wouldn't stop. The longing would grow year after year. I had to do it. A few years ago, my wife offered an initiation course in hand-drawn animation. And during the first hour of the course, I knew I was home. You see, this is the burning desire, you know. Ultimately, rejection only matters. Rejection doesn't matter, sorry. When you have a burning desire and a passion to do something, rejection is just part of the growing process, the growth process. We were learning basics, the bouncing ball, the walk, the run, etc. But after a year, the course closed. And after that, I tried private teachers. Uh, they were good animators with some experience. Um, but they were going quickly towards acting and advanced animation while I was feeling I didn't know the basics. Then, just a few weeks ago, I stumbled on your YouTube channel <coughs> and learned about the Real Animator Training Library. I looked at the content and at some experts, and it convinced me that this was precisely what I was looking for. So I subscribed, and here I am. I made a small investment to join the library, but it's nothing compared to what you offer us all. Valuable precious lessons on hand-drawn animation as the geniuses that were behind the success of Disney MGM Warner Stores. I'm now learning and working of materials for years for the rest of my life to fulfill my passion. So for all of this, I wanted to thank you. Stay safe and good health during these difficult times. P.S. Okay. The other thing that convinced me to join is that I've been practicing Kung Fu for 12 years. So I'm totally familiar with your martial arts teaching style. First the basics, then the intermediate then the advance to regular hard work, small step approach, uh, do as I show you. What I teach to my kid is to follow this teaching. Uh, they can do anything, become anyone. Of course, it may be a bit exaggerated, but it's far better than the gift thing I was told when I was young. There is no gift except the one that you build. And I love the way he closes that message. There is no gift except the one that you build. The gift is life, right? And ultimately, he's right. You know, I think his training in, in the martial arts has actually helped him because of that understanding of the growth process. The, you know, it's not about you have to suffer pain, you have to whatever. It's not about that. It's just about the natural process of, you know, opposites, hard and soft, yin and yang, this and that have have not okay the void the void is never a void 
because the vacuum law of prosperity says whenever there is a void, it will be filled. So ultimately, your life, everything about it is emptiness and you're always looking to fill it. And your fear of rejection is, is because you're wanting to fill it with something, but at the same time you're filling your mind with a possibility, you're recreating the void. You're taking out that possibility with fear that it might not happen. And that fear that it might not happen is then creating another void, and then you're filling that void with more fear, more negativity, more doubt, more anxiety, more worry about the possibility of it never happening. Um, so all you have to just do is just to be aware that, okay, this is something that I want to do. This is something that I've got my eye on. This is something that I'd like to take uh, <laughs> to, to a, a route that I'd like to go down. And ultimately, <laughs> I'm going to get there in the end if I just keep doing it. Persistence. Persistence is, you know, for me, the thing that the power towards your destination. The power of the pathway to progress. That's what persistence is. It powers your progress. Right, so that's basically it um, in terms of the messages I've got. But uh, what I like to do when I'm, I'm, I'm live and online and uh, uh, talking to you all is if you guys have got any questions for me uh, uh, that I can answer face to face uh, while I'm talking to the camera, then I'll be more than happy to take some of those. Uh, why did you take down your talk with Galen from yesterday? That talk wasn't from yesterday, Vietnam flashback. Thank you, Dylan. That talk with Galen was an old talk. You can go to, Ga you can go to a website called Art Tangents. Okay, that's actually, I was a guest on Galen's show. And if you go to the website, uh, if you go to Galen's podcast or you type in Art Tangents, uh, podcast AMB animation, you can find it online uh, anywhere. Okay. So I like to stream when I'm doing a work stream. Sometimes I like to just play that in the background because it's an interesting conversation and it just enables me to keep my channel alive streaming when I can't create content. Um, I've, I've got work to do. So uh, just go suit. Don't, don't thank me. Thank Galen. He, he, he worked very hard on that. There's also some other interviews which he did, uh, with other people in, in the art industry that you might find interesting as well. So, uh, so that's cool. Any advice on keeping the work pace? Well, I guess when you say work pace, um, basically, again, um, don't put any unnecessary, un undue uh, stress on yourself. Just say that I'm going to do this and I will have it. Look, again, I love, I guess like I, I, I talk a lot about my training because training was a lot of, uh, you know, my physical training was a big part of my life. You know, it still is, but I don't do it nearly as much as I used to. And I put it back to, I, I relate it to everything because I, because it's kind of, hi, I'm new member of the library basics and on the bouncing ball, you talk about the inner circle. The inner circle doesn't exist anymore. If you go to a uh, real animator growth development, the, the training library was started uh, three years ago. The inner circle was a three year trial for a mentoring group that I did. But now I basically have this free Facebook online community where everybody can post. Um, I no longer do the mentoring anymore. Um, the inner circle, when I started uh, that, the inner circle, the, the live stream library was not as big and not as powerful as what it is. It was just a few videos. If you look in the, if you're a full member of the Real Animated Training Library, you'll see all these old videos in these bonus archives, which are kind of unstructured. They're good little tip videos, but they're kind of unstructured. Then I developed this powerful learning system, which became a full course. And basically the courses are basically kind of they're kind of like a mentorship so the inner circle was like a mentorship while i was developing the courses so it doesn't exist anymore uh, and it costed a hell of a lot more because it was all the time one-on-one -on -one with me and my students but getting back to the thing about the pacing yourself look for example i used to be able to jump rope for half an hour non-stop okay then I didn't jump rope for a year, okay? I didn't jump 
broke for a year. Uh, I was busy with my training library. I was just doing strength training, pull-ups and things to maintain my physique while I was busy doing my building my business. Now I can't jump rope for more than, you know, about two minutes I have to stop and rest, okay? But in my mind, I know, okay, I, I, I can get it back there. I will go outside. I will jump rope for an hour if I have to, but in stages, and then eventually I will get my half hour back. But the thing is, is I'm not trying to I'm not beating myself up about it. I'm not saying, oh my God, why can't I do that? I used to when I was younger. I had it and now I lost it. Uh, oh, you know, it, it's foolishness. I had it. I'll have it again. I know, I know how to do it. Oh, little by little. Every day. Little by little. Life's not a rush. It's not a rush. You know, you have it. You have it again. It's not a rush. So if you're trying to get some job done, if you're trying to get work done, the thing is, is just understand that a little bit every day always trumps a lot. Because sometimes when you're doing a lot and you're stressing out over it, you're actually wasting a lot of energy on the stressing out. If you're relaxed, if you're sometimes when I'm relaxed and I know what I'm doing, I'm in the zone. I can go 14 hours a day working nonstop. I don't even, when I used to work on my um, uh, industry gigs, um, I knew that I could work a lot rougher, but I would work clean. I would work 14 to 16 hour days nonstop, never worrying about the super tight deadlines because I had full faith in myself that I'd make the deadlines because I was relaxed. Yeah, that happened kind of hard since the deadline pushed it back by another month. Yeah. So the thing is, is basically, you, you know, even if you've got a deadline, you got to say you got to say all right by this i got realistically what can i manage okay i can manage uh if i get this much done by then and I've, i get that much done by then but the thing is is again just like the rejection thing don't put too much on it don't don't stress out about it don't say oh it never happened i never made it you never made it so what so what ultimately like I never feared missing my deadlines. Never. You know, apart from maybe if I, when I would just started, because I had full faith in myself and I had so much, um, so what it means my life is a mess. Well, if you say that your life is a mess, then your life is a mess. You know what? I prefer to say, you know what? I'm a fucking badass and I can do anything I damn well want to. I'm the fucking best. I'm the boss. Their project is shit without me and they know it. And that's how I've approached all my gigs. To be honest with you, that's how I've approached all my gigs. And that's exactly why they call me back. That's exactly why even two, three years out of the industry, I still get letters. That's exactly why some of you saw on a live stream the other day, TV Paint come to me asking for me to uh, do a, offering me free software. And I don't even send them a reply because I think they didn't give me enough respect in the email. Ponder on that, my friend. Ponder on that. It's about self-belief. It's about self-worth. Okay. If you're all the time thinking that you're a cog in the machine, if you're all the time thinking that you're nothing and they're everything, they're so big and you're so small, that's the way that you're going to live your life. I'm not saying that you should think that you're bigger and better than everybody else. I'm saying that you should have some self-respect. I'm saying that you should be aware I'm saying that you should think to yourself, what is, what is it that this situation is? Okay, why did I not bother to reply to TV Paint? It seems like a perfectly good deal. TV Paint is saying to me, you can have our software for a year. And if you keep doing what, we're, what we've asked you to do, you can have it permanently. What's wrong with that? I guess nothing wrong with that. But my thing is, is they didn't tell me how great I was. They didn't tell me that they, that they know anything about my work. And on top of that, they didn't tell me, look, why should I spend my time learning a new software? Okay. And then talking about like, like my time is money. Never mind what I'm getting. You're not giving me enough. 
So it's about flipping the switch. Now, if you're looking, if you're a newbie, I get it. Okay, I'm a seasoned veteran, I'm veteran experienced pro. Uh, you know, I've been there. I've received lovely amounts of money for my artwork. I've had highs, I've had lows. I, I do what I want. I walk out of the industry. I start my own animation school. I do whatever I want. Okay, maybe you don't have, maybe you feel that you haven't done enough to be at that, uh, at that particular position where you are in your life. I, I get that. But then, but you know what? At the same time, you can't let people walk all over you. You have to say, you have to be, you have to be aware of yourself and your intentions. You have to say, okay, I'm in the industry now. I want to do a good job and I want to get to that position. I want to be at that position. So I will work hard to meet my deadlines. I have to care. I have to care enough. But how, what is this that these people are expecting of me? Are they expecting something that's too much? Well, sorry. And you know what? If you're, if you're that shit hot, You'll, you'll end up rising somewhere. You know, the opportunities are so big around this world on the internet and for your work to get recognized and known. That big, that's why big brands give people on Instagram, influencers and things all the time. Please wear our T-shirt. We'll pay you so much. Please do this. We'll pay you that much. Because at the end of the day, if you're shit hot and you're good, you believe in yourself. If you're all the time thinking, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't be so, so what, so what. It goes back to what I was saying earlier about the rejection thing, okay? Care, but don't care that much. Of course, you gotta care, but don't care that much. It's what I was talking about, the whole Zen thing of that scene in The Last Samurai. Do you plan to open your own studio at some point? <sighs> you know what, maybe, maybe not. I can't, I can't disclose that information right now. I'm, I'm toying with certain ideas, but it's at the moment, at, Let's let's just stick with real animator training. But the thing is, ultimately, you have to care about what you want, but again, care about it to your to, to your you know to, to your benefit, not to your detriment. If you care about it, it's like oh, oh I've, I've, the, the, you know I've, you know I'm going to fall to pieces if it doesn't happen. Or this is just too much for me. I can't take it. It's over. It's all so overwhelming. Then you know what? If it's all so overwhelming and your life is a mess and it's making you that unhappy, walk away. Find something else. Find something else. If it means losing your self-respect, you know, if it means losing your self-respect or losing your, you know, putting things in such a perspective that the other man has the, has, the, has, the, has the advantage over you, you know, to such a level that you're all the time going to be second best. Is that what you want in life? All the time second best? Of course, the best has to be earned, you know, which is why, you know, I say the best has to be earned. I want to be the best. I may not be the best now, but you know what? That's, that's the beauty of life. I want to be the best. I want to be the best. I want to be the best. You keep thinking best, 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 best. Keep going that way. See what you find. If you keep thinking second best, third best, fourth best, fifth best, being satisfied with that, that's okay too. But that's just my perspective. But that was a good, that was a good one. That was a good question to raise. Um, Thank you for enabling me to answer that. Do we have anything else? We're 39 minutes into, into, into the live stream. Do we have anything else that I can, uh, I can chime in? AMB, how can I fight the fear of I'm not ready to do my own stuff for personal projects? Octavio. Now, since I know where you're at, Octavio, um, how can you fight the fear of I'm not ready? Basically, get rid of the word not. You know, people have... People are fooled by the physical realm. Let me think of how to put this. In the physical realm, you say you always start with a negative. 
It's like the rejection, okay? Well, I haven't got it. I haven't got it at the moment. So it can't get any worse. So I might as well go for it. That's that's what that, that's what a that's what I would call a an entry level optimist. How they would think an entry level optimist. Well, you don't have it anyway, so you might as well go for it. Nothing wrong with thinking like that. I might add. I think that's a perfectly good way to think. But your but my problem with thinking that way is is you're 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 thinking about the effect. You see, the physical world is always the effects. The cause, the cause is the mind. So ultimately, you see, if you start with a negative, then you're going to be hounded by the negative, Octavia. You're going to be saying, well, I'm not ready. I'm not ready. Uh, I, I've got to get rid of the knot first. I've got to get rid of the knot. But you've put the knot there. So you're working to get rid of the knot. You want to be ready. You want to be ready without the knot. Not ready. But you're starting from the point of not ready. Not ready ready not ready not 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 no 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 and you're working to fight and get rid of the knot well here's the thing if you forget all of the things you see in front of you and you convince yourself in your mind in your mind when you're born there is no negative you're just there existence have yes positive Bonk, you're this life Bonk, life is onto you you're on, you're on the earth you have it all you have it all. It's only when you start growing and you hear people around you, you learn about that you don't have it all and how it's all not and how it can't be. No, no, no. So you should instead think, yes, yes, yes. I'm ready. I'm ready. Ultimately, you have to basically uh, say, A and B is that, but I missed that one. So ultimately, um, Octavio, you've been through the basics and intermediate training. There's some stuff in the advanced library that'll help you. But uh, do you think 2D animation is going to return in feature films? I'll answer you that in a minute, Yanis. So ultimately, you think, you know, you, you, you're, a, you're a smart one, Octavio, because you know what needs to be done. You've gone through the right training. OK, you've made an effort. So I would say that just like that other guy, you're going to persist until you eventually get there. But you you you're putting up a lot of barriers in front of you. So you are going to get there, but you're going to get there a lot slower because you're creating these <coughs> negatives. So you're ready. You're ready. The day you join Real Animator Training, and it doesn't have to be Real Animator Training. If you've gone to CalArts, if you've gone to Goblin, if you if you've bought some courses from some other really well-known animation professionals who have proved their worth in the business, it doesn't have to be me. As long as it's an established people who have proven to get good results. A and B is zapped by an aging Ryan is now 21 years old. Same skill. No one knows who you are. How do you attack your animation career? Interesting question. Um, I, I, I'm going to answer that after Yanis's. I've just got to finish this import, important point to... Didn't you think I was 21? What's wrong with you? <laughs> but but, uh, but uh, I've got to... Um, uh, so basically, Octavio, everybody is ready. Even people who haven't even learned the fundamentals of animation, they're ready. They just need to say, okay... I'm ready when I'm going to I'm going to go down that route and I'm going to get there. If you want to get on a plane, if I want to go to New Zealand to, to, to meet my wife, I get on the plane. I sit on the plane for 26 hours. I'm in New Zealand. It's a journey. It's got its time. OK, so you say I'm ready. This needs to be done. I've done that. You've done your fundamentals. You've done your basics. You're working on your drawing. Start making your film right now. You are ready. You were ready from day one. Look at look at Charlene. Charlene's doing the training. She's doing her uh, breakdowns against, you know, it's not that I don't advise, but she might be doing that a bit too much. But so what? That's her. That's her. She's ready. You, she's got that thing inside. I'm ready. I'm learning what I need to know. AMB is helping me and teaching me, but he's not the boss of me and I shouldn't be the boss of her. You know, I, I, I've just given her material to help her to learn and train, but she's got that thing of I'm ready. I'm going to do this breakdown. I'm going to do that. I'm going to do that. And that's the way it should be with you. 
and with everybody, even the people who want, who want to do anime, basically. They're ready. Just because I say you need to learn the fundamentals, yeah, okay, I want to do anime. I'll learn the fundamentals, but in, the, in my spare time, fuck what he says, I'll do the anime. He can, he can make fun of anime all he likes. That's what I am doing it. I'll take my information from him, but I'm ready. It doesn't mean you're not ready just because you're learning. On the contrary, if you're learning the right things, you're more than ready. That's the way you should look at it. Especially if you've made the right decisions on how to progress to where you need to go, which you certainly have. Now, Yanis says to me, uh, Yanis, I just have to point out, I, he's probably going to get fed up of it. You know, me telling this to Yanis is like when, Brit, uh, when um, I'm English, okay, but I've got Indian heritage, okay? So other English people will go to me, yeah, yeah, I had a curry last night, mate. I had a curry. <laughs> so me telling this to Yanis, he's probably, I'm doing the same thing. Like, Yanis, uh, I love Yanni, Greece. The, you know, he's probably thinking, oh, yeah, shut up, hear me. You know, but, but anyway, um, so the thing is, is uh, basically, the, the thing is, my pleasure, Octavio, do I think... Uh, f uh, feature animation will return. Look, feature animation has returned. Look at Klaus. Okay, have we forgotten Klaus? The thing is, is everything has its time uh, do things. Everything has its time and everything has its phase. And I used to, I used to mourn the loss of 2D at the cinema and Disney 2D. I used to live in a real depression about that i you know i nearly completely gave up animation like i'm not this guy that you you're talking i'm not this guy that you're talking to i wasn't the same person full of all this motivation and all this positive talk i was like my life's over hand-drawn disney aren't making hand-drawn animation anymore my purpose in life is gone oh oh I don't know what to do. Oh, everything. So that was me. That was literally me. Like living from day to day, hating my job of working in the animation industry, doing storyboards for stuff that I, 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 you know, I worked on Fantastic Mr. Fox, never watched it. Watched it on a plane in the, you know, a couple of years after it was released. Fell asleep during it. So that was me, hating my job, hating the industry. Everything was about Disney or please Disney, please make some movies for me to sit and jack off about how good hand drawn animation is. Oh, oh. That's how, you know, I'm laughing about it, but that's to me, that's kind of pathetic. I'm so glad that I met my wife and I kind of got snapped into actually, look, I'm a great hand drawn animator. I can do so much, you know, get your head out of their asses you know, put your head up your own ass a little bit, produce some amazing content, start doing something that you believe in, love it, and then you know what? Your life's going to be a whole lot happier, and that's exactly what it is. And now I'm this person here right now producing the, my own content, um, sharing uh, my views, my what's, what's helped me in the animation industry with all you guys, and uh, sharing my opinions. So... The thing about it is, 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 again, yeah, it'll be nice if hand-drawn animation does make a return to the f way it used to, but I don't know if it will, and I don't care, to be honest with you, and I don't think it matters as long as it exists and as long as there's a market for it. And if anything, I think it's better that it doesn't. I think it's better because you know what? When something's a bit smaller niche, it gets a little bit more elite in the art ranks. When I look at all these mainstream, big, successful things, I didn't see it at the time. I still love Aladdin. I still love Mermaid. I still love Beast. I still think they're great, great films. But they are kind of like just mainstream commerce in that regard, which nothing wrong with that. I, you know, I, I, nothing wrong with that. But you know what? I, I kind of like this being in this position of being more elite. You know, that's why I started this whole real animation thing. Okay. Okay, you know, your, your CGs, your, uh, your cutouts, you know, all that assisted automated animation. I'm not saying those people don't know what they're doing, but their work looks 10 times better because the machine's helping them, you know. Yeah, okay. okay. But you know what? Hand-drawn. We're artists.
we draw it. We draw it all. It's uh, we have the power. It's our expression. It's our marks made. It's our skill. That's what it is. And I like that. I love it. So I don't care. Personally, that's not my fight anymore. That's not my fight anymore. Ultimately, my it used to be my fight, but you know what? There's a possibility. Other people out there might have that burning desire, Yanis. Maybe even you to want to bring it back to the big cinema. And where there's a burning desire, where there's a void, as I said, the vacuum law of prosperity, there's a chance for it to be filled. Me personally, I don't care. Um, I just care that hand-drawn animation is being made and it's being made to the level and it's being appreciated by the people who really appreciate it. You know, it's not being taken for granted. Like the way it kind of, as soon as it got too big, you kind of got Disney kind of making these straight to video sequels, these TV shows based on those feature films with far worse quality animation. But because the drawings were the same, the average Joe in the public didn't care. It made the kitty happy. That's where CG is right now. I'm quite happy with CG being the king of the mountain. I'm quite happy. <laughs> That's where I am right now. Okay? So, um, so, but that was a good question. And, you know, there's every possibility. If, if, you know, there's every possibility. But where you are, you're somebody, I know who you are. You're in the training library. You're working hard. Just be happy that you're doing what you love. And, uh, you know, you've got the opportunity to create hand-drawn animation. And it's not going anywhere. If anything, it's coming back. It's coming back. So it's, it's certainly bigger than it ever, big, bigger than what it was. Now, somebody asked me if I got zapped into being 21 and I was going to start my animation career all over again. You see, that's a bit of a strange question, because if you're talking to me about the times where we are at now, I would have to think, OK, um, I just like everybody else would have been socially conditioned by society. But if you're saying if I know now, so you're saying I'm zapped. So I have all the knowledge that I have now, and I was turned into 21. <laughs> that would be different, because I wouldn't be socially conditioned to like all the crap mainstream music, to not, to not have... You know, I was hap happy growing up in the 80s, because in the 80s, you are as you are now, yes. See, because when I was in the 80s, right, um, we grew up with this kind of mentality that, you know, all these these kind of macho films, machoism and all this kind of going for it, you know, uh, you know, Maverick, Top Gun, Stallone, go for your dreams, you know, the one man on his mission. That was still the very kind of thing that was put forward, you know, chase your dreams, be a dream chaser and have all this, you know, all this very. Uh, so I'm glad I grew up then because a lot of that has had its effect on me. I was socially conditioned. But I'd be very sad to be socially conditioned today. I'd probably be quite a weak person. I'd probably be very dependent on, 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 you know, it's all about togetherness. Now, I don't have a problem. Togetherness is very important. If there was no audience to like my work, if 43 people weren't watching me now, you know, where would all this big macho, all this individualism go? Nowhere. So we do need to have togetherness. Let me just get that straight. But I think it's gone too much the other way now. So I would probably be a, a bit of a limp dick. You know, I probably would have no no backbone. I would probably be, you know, just, you know, looking at everything else and riding the tide and looking at my phone, being too lazy to do anything. Kids, actually, I think having too much makes it a little bit harder on kids nowadays. It does. It makes it a little bit harder. But you know what? There are still plenty of kids out there who are chasing their dreams and succeeding. So good for them. But uh, so if I was going to start the animation industry again, it's a difficult one because I'm not sure I would want to be in animation. Animation just is not so special anymore. Um, when I was young, animation, the fact that somebody drew all that, that fascinated me. Wow. 
you're bringing things to life with a pencil, you're drawing, you're doing all that. But because it's not in the mainstream, which is what Yanis said, and it's all about computer graphics and sliding little shapes, I'd be like going, fuck no, I don't want to do that. That's a waste of time. I'd probably be wanting to write comic books or draw illustration. But then I would see AMB making his real animator training and go, there's hand-drawn animation. So maybe I'd want to do that. So getting to the point is I would say to whoever asked that question, I might not necessarily want to be entering the animation industry. I might be wanting to make it as an independent animator. I might be wanting to think more instead of going and working for an animation studio. I might be thinking, why don't I try to make great online animation work, make a presence online, which is exactly what I'm doing now anyway, as a, as a, as a 42 year old, not a 21 year old, but I would still be doing that. I'd still be going, you know what, maybe I don't have the skills to be teaching and sharing and drawing from all this experience, but I would be creating great work. And there are some youngsters out there doing that on YouTube, actually, who I've got a lot of respect for. Some of you don't know, there are probably, when I talk about all these YouTubers with no skill, you're thinking I'm just shoving them all together. But there are some young YouTubers out there who are going for it, absolutely going for it, whether they've got the skill or whether they don't have the skill. And they're doing something with their life. And you know what? They're happy. They're happy. They're really, really happy. And I salute them. I absolutely salute them because because that's the way forward for them with their hand-drawn animation. You know, so, so if I was the young AMB, knowing everything I know now, and but then I would have the skills that I have now, okay? If I had the skills that I had now, okay? Then I would be, be AB, yes, yes, whoever said that, Howard whatever. I, I never remember his second name. Howard whatever. He sometimes comments on some of my videos. He's, he's one. That, that, that youngster is a guy who's, who's really uh, chasing his dreams. And you know what? More power to him. Good for you, Howard. So the thing is, ultimately, the it's a tough one because if I was a youngster and I didn't have the skills that I have now, I would go and watch me to get those skills. I would go and watch... Uh, um, uh, Aaron Blaze or the Bancroft brothers or John Pomeroy, I would go to where I would be able to find the skills I need if I was interested in hand-drawn animation. I would go to the best. If I loved anime, I would seek out if there was a professional Japanese anime guy. I would seek that person out. Okay? And I would buy all the books. I'd study those. But then I would be working and working and working and I would be persistently putting stuff out. Just like I said, without the fear of rejection, I would be persistently putting stuff out, persistently putting stuff out, persistently putting stuff out until I would, uh, until eventually it would come back to me and I've created something. So that's what essentially I would generally be doing in, uh, if I was 21 again. Um, I would actually include the industry in my uh, pathway because the industry, even though I poo-poo it now, if you're at the very top, it's still bloody awesome. Okay, there's still bloody awesome people in the industry. But even if you're at the very bottom, even if you're working cutout, even if you're working storyboard on, on these really shitty Cartoon Network shows, However shitty they are, there is a level of professionalism. There's a level of professionalism and there's a level of experience that is so, 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 so important to, to be gained. And it is very, very important to acquire that so you can put that into your own journey. So I would also look to get industry experience, whether I was interested in the industry or not even if I hated it. You know, this is what, you know, again, to bring it back to the martial arts and my influence, which is a lot of my influence is, is, is the great Bruce Lee. People misunderstand him because he would always say that all this martial arts is useless and, you know, and they would say that's all very well him saying it's all useless. He studied it 
and then he says it's all useless. But what he meant was, is you, he had this thing, absorb what is useful, reject what is useless, and add specifically what is your own. So it didn't mean you just ignore it and say it's useless. I reject it. You'd have to go through the process. You'd have to absorb what is useful. You have to say, take that. Yes, okay, I've got this industry experience. I know how it's done in the industry. I know how we do things in the industry. I know the industry pipeline. I understand the budgets. I understand the timelines. I understand how, if I have to make a project, how I'm going to make it. Yes, if I was thrown into it, I would messily do it if I didn't have the experience. Like perhaps maybe uh, the guy who we were talking about earlier, but well done, you know. But ultimately, if you have that industry experience, it's a plus. It's a huge plus. And you have the contacts, and you have the friends, and you have, you know, connections to, to even better things, to, to learn even more. So, so the, the 21 year old AMB would say, okay, I don't want to work in the industry. I want to create my own hand drawn animation, but I want to be, a, I want to be the, the best I can be. So in order to be the best I can be, here's the things that I would need to do. I would need to get some industry experience. I'd need to surround myself with people who were super, super good at, at what I want to do. And I would need to acquire the skills and abilities. When are you ready for the industry? Whenever you think you're ready. Dylan, you could be ready right now. Just make some contacts, make some friends, uh, apply for some positions, and don't try to get in at the very top. If, if somebody says, look, uh, we'll give you this job that's not even animation related. It's like the most lowly kind of thing. Just take it just to try and move yourself up there. You know, just, just take it. <laughs> exactly what I'm saying. Like, it's what I was saying to the other guy. When are you ready for the industry? You're ready from day one. Okay, I've met some people. You are, you participated in a podcast a couple of days ago. Uh, it wasn't a couple of days ago. It was a year or so ago. <laughs> okay, I think it was in 2018. I like to replay it. Just go and type in Art Tangents, Art by Galen, Art Tangents, AMB Animation, What Holds Us Back. Okay, type that in. What Holds Us Back, AMB Animation, Art Tangents. You'll find it online. It, he owns the podcast. It's his um, so basically, um, don't keep telling yourself that you're not ready, you're not ready, Dylan or Octavio or anyone, and um, just understand that uh, no matter how many times you get rejected, there will come a time when, when you won't get rejected, and that's when your opportunity is. There's opportunity around you always. When one door closes, there's always another opening, all, all the time, you know? all the time, so long as you're living, so long as you're alive, so long as you're experiencing things, it is impossible, okay? So don't, just don't let it be, I'm actually working with someone to make music videos, met the dude last year and his website basically said he was all for nothing, gave it a shot, now we're really officially working on it. There you go, that's how things happen, okay? Do you like, basically, here's the thing. Do you like the circumstances? Do you don't like the circumstances? Are you okay with the circumstances? And is the thought of it being okay with the circumstances good enough for you to get further down the line? Once that's all clear in your mind and you're happy with it, go for it. Go for it. That's, that's all I can say. But if you're so proud and you're so not happy with the circumstances, then just don't. Which is like I told you about giving you the example about the TV paint thing with me. Nothing wrong with them. Nothing, you know, uh, no problem with them. Just didn't like the circumstances. So that's what I have to say. So the 21-year-old AMB would say, well, I love hand-drawn animation. I don't really like anything to do in the animation industry because I can't stand, I don't watch any animation today. So I wouldn't want to be involved in the industry today. I'd be watching all the old Disney things. I, I don't watch all this. So I'd say, well, you know what, but I'd need to learn it. I think what's wrong with today is that we're seeking quali quality over quantity. However, you can get quality without quantity. I think you got that the other way around. I think they're seeking quantity over quality. Uh, personally, I, I don't see any. I, I see very little quality today. Um, but, uh, but yeah, so ultimately, then I would look to do my own thing. And I think you got that's That's what I think. You, you young guys are living in the world's best time, in my opinion. 
in spite of all this coronavirus. And I think this coronavirus is, is actually an opportunity for people to sit down and really think about their lives. If, you know, there's nothing better than being alone with yourself. Uh, of course, I mean, I mean, that's a bit of an overstatement. I mean, it, it, there are too many extremes. But what I mean by that is it's like that time when you're alone with yourself to search within what, what you want to, what, what really makes you happy, that's a very good time to be because you cut out the noise. You're forced to be bored. You're forced to to be that way. Um, I can make a decent project. I'll improve with time. I don't see why not. Yeah. So the thing is, is that then you basically say, <coughs> well, you're living in great times. You can. How can you avoid frustration when learning drawing and animation takes longer than you expected? Okay. The, the easiest way to avoid frustration is, is, is to basically say to yourself, well, what do you mean takes longer than you expected? What did you expect? Ask yourself, sit down and ask yourself, what did you expect? Okay. The thing is, is when you're too busy looking, okay, when you're too busy looking for the end, you know, you're, it's like, would you go in to watch a movie, right? And if it was a really good movie, would you be waiting for the end? But you go, this movie's going on for too long. <laughs> oh, man, this movie's going on for so long. <sighs> you just get out. You see, Sometimes it's so long, you can't take it. <laughs> and then you just get out, you leave. You know? So if it's taking too long and it's frustrating you, you don't want it enough. You don't care about it enough. You just like the idea of being good at animation and drawing. That's what it is. If you loved it, you would be sitting down doing your drawing and animation, right? And every time you made a little bit of progress, you'd go, fuck yeah, yes, yes. And that feeling of heightness, like, yes, I did it. I, look at that. Look, at that. I finally worked that out. You'd be empowered. You'd be drawing some more and drawing some more. Just like the people in my library group, right? Just like you look at those people on Facebook, the minute they start, I love watching them. They do that bouncing ball. They do that. Travis is another one uh, who's been, uh, he used to be in the inner circle. Somebody mentioning inner circle. Once they get on that thing of like, they finally figure out that they're learning this and they, they know that like Frilled Mayfry, the timing charts, Travis, Travis used to message me all the time. He was so frustrated. It's not happening fast enough. He'll tell you, oh, A M B A M B. But then as soon as like, he started to get it. It's like, yeah, baby, yeah, I love this. Bring it on. And like, it's almost like you don't want the learning to stop because you're 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 loving the process. But if you're someone, I'm not good enough. Yeah, I'm not good enough. You're like that person in that movie, like, oh, this movie is going on for too long, man. Would you watch a movie like that? No, you wouldn't. So why, you know? Some, that's why I say to people, like, that's why I call it real animator training. Look, if you're going to do this, then you're going to do it. You love it. If you don't love it, you might think you love it. You just like the idea of it. You like the idea of, yeah, yeah, I'm good at drawing. I'm good at animation. I've also heard that quote that says motivation starts in the middle. Uh, greetings all. How are you doing, Michael Elliott? Yeah, so that's why I haven't got it yet. Is you don't really want it enough. Because ultimately, you know, it ain't about being grateful is important, but it ain't about being grateful. It's about if you love it enough. How are you doing? If you love it enough, then just the whole process of doing it is that you love it. I'm doing the same thing that I've always been doing since I've been like 13 years old. 13, like I was eight years old when I wanted to be an, I wanted to write comic books and things. But let's just say I was 13 when I really wanted to do animation and be an animator for Disney. And I started doing my own little scenes. I started doing head turns, head turns, walk cycles. I've been doing them since I was 13 and I'm still doing them now. And I'm making money from doing them and telling other people how to do them. Nothing much has changed. You know what? I fucking love it. That's what I love doing. I love doing it. I've always loved doing it. And you know what? It never stops. Because if you really, really love doing something, you don't care. You, you just don't care. How are you doing? Because that's just how it goes. I enjoy hearing your wise words, man. Thank you. This is not a sprint. It's a marathon, like Chuck Jones' uncle used to say him. Yeah, 
I didn't get to read all of that more, but <clears throat> basically that's what it is. And you don't even, I don't even think of it like a race. I wouldn't even liken it to a race. You know what? I think life for me got so much easier when I stopped being competitive. I stopped being competitive. I always wanted to be the best. And I always wanted people to recognize that I was the best. And that's why I was always in a very, having a very, very frustrating time. And I was never able to enjoy the things that I'm enjoying now and that I'm sharing with you and telling you that you should maybe sit back and enjoy now. Because I've been there. Whether it was my martial arts or whether it was my animation and my drawing, if I couldn't do the thing, I would talk about it as if I could do it. And I would convince myself that I was the best and talk to other people about, I would, like, as, as like a guy who really knew it all and was the best. But I would never actually, you know, I couldn't do it. And what a joke. What an absolute joke. And, because, and not only that, it's self-sabotage because you talk about it so much and you, you delude yourself into thinking that, yeah, yeah, I'm the best and everything. And then you, you live in this little box and your whole little world around you and then somebody shatters that and you're all the time on the edge. Like the minute you see that you're not the best, you're not, oh, 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 oh I, I didn't see that. Yeah, yeah, I'm the best. Yeah, I'm the best. <laughs> it's just, yeah, it was, a, it was a horrible way to be, you know. In some regards, it helped me a little bit because it gave me confidence, you know, this false confidence to go and do things. But in, in the long term, it wasn't very, it wasn't very happy. Uh, we have hail outside. Wow. So the thing is, is, so if you basically just eliminate the competition and just say, you know what, this, especially, especially this isn't sports, this isn't martial arts. Uh, this is animation, this is drawing. So if you say, you know what, this is a creative industry, this is creative, I'm a creator, I've, I, I'm creating these things from my imagination and I'm expressing them on the page, there's nothing competitive about it. Don't put competition in there, take it out, take it out. Say, I'm expressing, I'm creating, and I'm going to create this. How can I create it better? How can I create it better? How can I create it better? Not how can I be better than that? How can I, be, how can I best that? How can I have what he has? Or how can I do what she does and do it better? Or how can I be bigger than them or better than... Eliminate all that and just say, how can I create this better? How can I put my vision better across? And... Once you eliminate the competition, <coughs> you are free mentally and your work just goes like that. I watched AMB's early te pencil tests like, oh, <laughs> that's nice. What's this about my early pencil tests? What's this about my early pencil tests? I don't know. So... You know, it's, it's, it's a balancing thing because that thing about wanting to be the best isn't all bad. You know, I wouldn't have got to where I got if I didn't have that, some of that attitude, you know, of like really, really ambition and thriving. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, yes, I was a pro animator in my early 20s. I, I got a job straight in the animation movies, in, in, in the animation industry after leaving animation school because I had that attitude. <laughs> you know, here I am telling you not to have that attitude. But uh, take the good stuff from it. You once mentioned that you would dedicate a stream to how to overcome fear when learning art and animation. How to overcome fear? Um, well, maybe. I mean, I've kind of been talking about that. It was What was the time you stopped enjoying? Oh, I missed that. That seemed like a good one. Um, but basically... Um, yeah, I became an animator in the industry uh, because I had that attitude of I'm going to get what I want and I'm going to succeed and all that. But take the good side from it and eliminate the competitive crap. I'm telling you as somebody who's done it and been there, like there's a good side to it, the ambition, the, the self-belief, the confidence. The bad side to it is the delusion, the fear, 
you know, celebrate the superiority of others and use it as a light to point you towards the truth. That's the way I would say it now. Thank goodness that person's so much better than me because now I can study from them the way some of you are studying from me. I'm willfully sharing my skills, everything I know with people. And isn't it a good thing? But, you know, part of me would be, oh, that, that bastard, I'll draw better than Some people do it. Some people, they hate on me. They troll on me. They don't just troll on me. Some, some guys were trolling on one of the best animators in the world. Was there a time you stopped enjoying animation because of the competition aspect? Never, never, never. You know, I was a bit of a sadist in that regard. I was a bit of a sadist in that regard. I was a bit of like, yeah, I was a bit of like, I, I, I would like the... the comp I don't want to talk. I don't want to talk positively about competition because I'm I, I'm downplaying it. But the, you know, it's not that simple. Like sometimes, sometimes people like the competitive edge as a motivator. So in that way, it motivated me. But I, I still say, in hindsight, the moment I eliminated the competitive aspect of my character, um, things started to become a lot better for me because I was a lot happier and I was a lot able to be, create freely. But it's, it's not that clear cut. How do you fight the monotony that comes with drawing the same character? Well, it depends if you think it's monotonous. I mean, you got a bit of a problem there because I don't think it's monotonous. I mean, if I don't like, if, I, if, if I'm working on an industry gig, maybe it's a monotony, okay? Maybe it's a monotony of drawing the same character that I don't like drawing. Uh, so there are two things. Two aspects. If you're working on your own thing, which I think you are, I could be wrong. If you're working on your own thing, it shouldn't be monotonous. I design my characters. I love my characters. I love drawing them. Especially the one that looks like my wife. Looking at the most beautiful person in the world in hand-drawn animated form. Ah, That's not monotonous to me. I draw it forever. Not monotonous to me. So the thing is, you know, there's that. But if you're forced to draw something that you don't want to draw, if you're in the industry, which is what I was, forced to do stuff that I didn't want to do, like Lego characters over and over again in storyboards, you know what? It ain't monotonous because I would go, you know what, no matter what it is, every time I do a drawing, it's fucking awesome. I'd, oh, I'd, I'd want to have, I'm sorry to say this word, I'd want to have an orgasm every time I look at my drawings. That's what it is. Ah, such an amazing drawing. Ah, what an amazing drawing. That's the way I want to see my work. Every time. And you know what, it never happens. It never happens because I haven't got to that level yet. But the thought that the next drawing that I'm going to make is going to be the best drawing I've ever made. And it's going to be the most, I, I'm going to be ecstatic, beyond ecstatic. So I would never find it monotonous drawing the same thing over and over again, no matter what, because I love drawing. You've got to think about why you're drawing to get to the root of it. What is the point of your drawing? If your point of your drawing is to impress others, then you might find it monotonous. Because if you're thinking, well, I'll do this. If I'm going to do this, like if I'm going to, you know what? I don't like, I want to be Instagram famous. I don't like Donald Trump. But if I draw Donald Trump and and I make fun of him because that's what the in thing is to do. And that's what everybody does to get noticed at the moment. I'm going to, if that's your intention, then it might be monotonous because you've got no interest in Donald Trump anyway. You're drawing it for the wrong reasons. You're drawing it by because you've created a fake scenario in your mind that this is what's going to get you recognition. This is what's going to get you noticed. This is what's going to bring you fame. It's not really about the drawing. It's about those things. And you're using the drawing as your tool for that. So there's no love for the drawing. That, that could maybe be it. I don't know. It's difficult just from a one 
one little comment. But for me, there should be no monotony. And if there is monotony in it, if it's like it's not like I don't ever get bored. I get bored doing in-betweens all the time. But you know what? The thought of when those in-betweens are done and how good it'll look makes me excited. But, you know, there comes a time when, you, you know, the process has to stop for a little while because being a human being, you want to do something else. I'll go away from my board. I'll do a bit of exercise. I'll do something. I'll maybe play a little bit of Street Fighter on my iPad. Make me a bit happy. Make me 10 minutes of that. I'm ready to go again. Let's go start drawing again. Thank you. I really enjoyed drawing the extremes and the in-betweens are less exciting. Ultimately, what I was referring to. Yeah, well, the in-betweens uh, can be less exciting. But it's funny because I don't even think of it as a character when I'm in-betweening it. It's just in-betweening lines. It's just in-betweening lines. And one of the things I like to do um, when I'm in-betweening is, is I like to put on an audio book. And I like to listen to an audio book. Um, because it's not as much brain work when you're in between. It's very, very straightforward. Um, or I stream and I play you all a podcast <laughs> when I'm doing that kind of stuff. So um, so that was it. Um, so I, th I think that's about it. I mean, somebody's... Um, I'm listening to AMB while in between. I play music to get rid of the monotony. I'm learning an instrument. Yeah, there you go. There you go. <laughs> There's so many things you can do uh, to multitask, you know, to multitask when you're doing like uh, those kind of things. But I think, you know, um, yeah, it's, it's been a pretty good one. It's been a pretty good catch up. I'm still kind of <laughs> kind of coughing a little bit, but um, I've had fun coming on stream to uh, to, to have one of these little uh, chats uh, with you guys. Uh, I like to keep these going. So if any of you have any more questions that you want to message me or a question in the comments when I come off stream, after this, I'll play Disney movies like Hercules. <laughs> Travis. Travis is the... Travis is exact real animated training material. I just finished my workout. Any tips on upper or lean upper workouts at home? Okay. Um... I would say if you want to be lean, you want to focus on on the uh, on the supersets. Okay, uh, one of my favorite uh, upper body workouts, uh, which I might do today um, after this, is as I like to have. It's very important to have a pull up bar. A pull up bar is super super important. And this is very very easy. Now, depending on your level. Now, I don't like to with with the my pleasure. Merci, merci beaucoup, uh, Eric. Depending on your level, I don't like to differentiate between men and women and say women are weak. Um, there have been plenty of women. I, I used to spar with the European Taekwondo champion at one time. Um, there's many, you know, she was, uh, there, there's many divisions, so it's not like she was the elite, elite of elites. We all got pull-up bars here. Awesome. Now, if you've got a weighted vest, that's even better, Okay. Uh, I'm not doing weighted vest training anymore because, like I said, it's been a while since I've been training uh, heavy. So um, I'm I'm slowly getting back into that. Um, but one of my favorite ones would be, be to wear a 10 kg weight vest and I would do um, uh, 10 pull-ups on the pull-up bar and then I would do uh, 20 push-ups, okay? And then I would uh, go on and I would then decrease, you know, to doing five pull-ups with the weighted vest uh, and then another 10 push-ups, and then another five pull-ups with the weighted vest. So I would basically do 50 pull-ups with the weight weighted vest and uh, 100 push-ups with the uh, weighted vest. Now, I'm not. if you can't do the weighted vest, that's fine, okay? That's okay. So I would do that in as many sets as it takes, but as, I would, as, as, as soon as I would fail on one, so maybe I can't do five, I could only do three, or maybe even just one pull-up, I would then... Uh, keep working the negative, I would switch to the push-up, okay? With with little to no rest, no more than like five breaths of air, okay? If you really need to rest, no more than five breaths of air. Because this is keeping the, this is keeping the cardio, um, this is keeping the cardio going to keep you lean. Because strength training and to keep you lean as well, okay? So you're, so you're doing cardio strength, okay? And then when you remove the weight, when you, when you have finished your 50, pull, uh, your uh, uh, 
25 pull-ups and 50 push-ups, I think I said, uh, you would then move on, you would then take the weighted vest off and then you would proceed to do uh, the same thing again without the weighted vest. So you would do 25 pull-ups without the weighted vest, 25 pull-ups with the weighted vest, making a total of 50. And then you would do 50 push-ups with, with the weighted vest and 50 push-ups without the weighted vest. Um, and then, then that, that would be a nice back, uh, chest uh, and arm workout to keep you lean, okay? uh in that regard that's one of that's personally one of my favorites i like to throw a bit of legs in there and do some single okay i'll practice trying to get one pull up you know again you know what stand on a chair it's funny this is animation and i'm talking this <laughs> stand life fantasy you'll get a pull up by by the end of the week stand on a chair okay and then grab the pull up bar and then lower yourself down slowly repeat 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 it's so easy okay it's so so easy stand on a chair lower yourself down repeat and then by the end of the week you'll be able to do one that's called a negative repetition okay then you'll be able to do one it's the same like doing a pistol squat people used to think those one-legged squats are so difficult ultimately start on the floor sit down or sit on a chair and just stand up Sit on a chair. Keep doing it hundreds and hundreds of times. Eventually, you'll have the strength to lower yourself and stand back down. So, um, so that's a, that. That's a little bit of <laughs> of, uh, of uh, lean workout uh, tip for you there, uh, life fantasy. Um, mm, I have a pull up bar. I should try that. Yeah. Hey guys, same hair. Uh, would like to do one pull up. Charlene, yeah, try it all. It's, it's, it's like try it all. But, did you see the new Looney Tunes? You know what? I haven't seen it. And to be honest, I, I can't pretend I'm going to see it. Um, me and you both like fantasy, which is why I look like this and I don't look all big and bulky. I just, I just like cardio. Um, I just am not interested in, in these... Uh, it's not so much like I didn't even see Klaus. And uh, like, you know what? Even if Disney made a new hand-drawn movie with even if the old giants got back together again and worked on it, maybe I'll watch it if I'm on the plane or maybe if I'm with my wife and she says, let's watch a movie, I'll say, you know what, we'll watch it. But I've kind of got to a phase in my life where I'm just not a watcher at all anymore. I just, I get tired when I sit down to watch something. I'm too much in love with creating my own things. That might sound a little pretentious to you, and I get that. But it's like, I just have no will or desire to sit down and look at other people's stuff anymore. Like, I don't mind looking at a small scene on the internet, or but to sit down and give an hour of my time, or, you know. And when, when it comes to, like, 20, when it comes to, like, a loon, Looney Tunes, like a five-minute thing, even that's too much. Because like I'm not, when I look at it, I look at the way they've redesigned Bugs Bunny. I look at the, I look at the kind of the art direction. It just like the original kettlebells are good for weights and cardio. Kettlebells are pretty good. I don't do, do them so much anymore. I like to uh, do one-legged squats holding a 25 kg kettlebell. That's a difficult one. But the, uh, the thing is, is, uh, when you look at, well, and I just, it just doesn't feel like it's something I want to see. It just looks, it just looks bad from my perspective. Like the original Looney Tunes, I wasn't that much of a fan of anyway. But I would like sometimes sit down and watch them because as I was studying Yosemite Sam, I was thinking... No, it's not all pretentious. I saw the trailer, but it seems like in a hollow way they made it look like they did their best. Yeah, I've seen, I've seen the, I've seen some clips of it, and it looks like they're trying to go back to the forties. But I don't know who it's for, because kids today don't watch that kind of stuff, and my generation grew up on that stuff, and like we're gonna look at it, most of us, and go, 
that ain't right. That I'd rather watch the like I'd rather watch uh, the Disney. I would rather watch Brock Classic Donald Duck uh, with amazing animation or Brave Little Taylor, animated by Milk Carl, Ollie Johnston, Ward Kimball, the Nine Old Men. I'd rather watch that. So Fred Moore, I'd rather watch that than hacks in the industry just shitting crap out, trying to look like that. It's just so I don't know who it's for. I don't think it's going to be a hit with the kids of today because their sense of humor is different. Their sense of humor is just completely different. They're, they're, they're living in the world of TikTok. I don't get, like, I love my daughter, but I don't get her. Like, the stuff she laughs at, like, the TikTok memes of just, like, any average Joe kid walking in this room going, ah, good luck to that kid. I'm not hating on that kid. He's thriving right now. Fantastic. I don't get it. I don't get what they laugh at. So I can't see that generation looking at these Looney Tunes and finding it funny. Because they didn't find they didn't find the originals that funny. So I honestly don't know who it's for. It's certainly so but when I look at it, I go, that, 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 look, that, that looks kind of bad to me. Kind of looks like the well, well done, they're kind of having a go, they're kind of trying to recreate the originals. But you know what? I've got the originals. It's like somebody going into the Louvre going let's take down the original Mona Lisa and let's put up this artist's impression of it and we'll all gather around and look at it that's my problem with all these Disney remakes like Disney have successfully uh, my sense of humor is both TikTok memes and Looney <laughs> there you go Disney have successfully completely killed the aura of their animation by Going for the quick bucks, they've completely kind of killed the aura of it. Um, Klaus, until the... Um, my friend is very... He hates doing art because he thinks he's not the bus, but he also does not accept feedback. Well, in a way, like, I kind of like his attitude. Uh, why should everybody be open? Why should you be open to all feedback? Who's giving you feedback? Are you worthy? Are you worthy of my goal to give me feedback? Let's just put now. I like feedback from you guys because you're my audience, and I'm tr I'm being an animation instructor. So if you tell me A and B, that's not very clear, or A and B, I didn't quite get that. I'll better go. Oh well, you know that that's my feedback. But if I want feedback about my art, I want it from a professional. I want it to somebody from somebody who's been there and done what I done what I wanted to do and that's what I want feedback if I get feedback if some average Joe gets butt hurt because I think his feedback like I didn't ask for it pal fuck you I don't, I'm sorry mate sorry you 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 ain't nothing <laughs> I don't care what you think and he gets butt hurt who's the arrogant one who is the arrogant one who asked for your feedback why I didn't ask for it now you're getting upset because I don't rate it you know, because there's this default position that all feedback is good feedback. No, it ain't. Why should, why should somebody... you got to realize how hard it is. People talking to me about rejection. How do I deal with rejection and all this and that? It's very hard in a world that is so swamped in negativity to remain positive, to remain focused, to go to that thing that you're, you're aiming for and to keep a positive mental attitude. And when you all the time got people around you, everyone has an opinion. Everyone. Everyone under the sun. It's the cheapest thing in the world. Worthless. Worthless. And they're going to give it to you whether you want it or not. And too many people are putting too much value in that cheap piece of shit coming out of people's mouths trying to kill other people's dreams, okay? So at the end of the day, I have the view of like, I want feedback, I want criticism, but you know what? I'm going to be damn well selective of who I get it from because i got to stay positive. I don't care even if that person might have some, some validity in his feedback. I don't want to hear it. Because that person is nothing to do. They're not in animation. They haven't done a single piece of professional animation in their life. They can't even draw that well. But they are coming to me and telling me, fuck you. Plain and simple. That's my mental attitude about that. 
And that's the way my life is so easier. And that's how I stay focused. And that's how I can continue to where I want to go. And then I go to the people who, who have the things I want and I go, excuse me, sir, what's wrong with this? Just like I told you about that when I went and worked on Adam Sandler's Eight Crazy Nights. The guy ripped me to shreds. I was straight out of animation school. He ripped me to shreds. This is wrong, that's wrong, but I loved every minute of it. I loved it. I was like a sadist. Tsh, tsh, tsh. More, more, yes, yes, more, please. Give it to me again. Tsh, tsh. Yeah, you know, I couldn't get enough of it because it was feedback that I wanted to get where I wanted to go from the right person. From the right person. So anybody comes and says, oh, he doesn't value feedback. He doesn't. Oh, hold on a minute. Who are you to be giving feedback? Who are you to be giving feedback? What have you done? Perhaps you should check your premises. You know? That's the way I look at it. That's, that's how I think people are going to stay mentally healthy when they flip the switch. Flip the switch. Guys are suggesting on tea flavors. Okay, cinnamon. Cinnamon and cardamom. To whoever mentioned Looney Tunes here, what's the Looney Tunes? They use some flash animation and the colors are plastically. I couldn't have put it better myself. You know, I couldn't have put it better myself. So that's my view on that. Like feedback, criticism, all that thing is all, it's all at its place, but make sure that you look. I mean, I don't know, I make music and I always appreciate feedback, non musicians being the make my. Yeah, well, I guess so. If that's your outlook, if that's your outlook, but. For me, it's like where you want to be at a certain time. You know, if, if you're making musicians, if you're making music for people to sell, then fine. But if you're making music, if you're making music and you're trying to learn something and you're trying to put something together, then I would surround my, myself with the, with the technical aspect because it's different things. If you're making stuff for an audience, I'm talking purely from the perspective of, if you're trying to reach a goal, if you're trying to get better at a skill, if you're trying to accomplish something. I'm not talking from a perspective of somebody selling something to an audience. If you're a musician and you're listening to the audience and you wonder how it sounds, then sure, you've got to do if, if, I, if I'm trying to make a film and they say they don't like this character, it's got a big nose or a big that or whatever. Sure, because you're, that's called market research in the business world. We do market research. We say, okay, well, do people like it? It's like, but then if you sell yourself out that much, you know, what I used to hate about new Disney covers, Disney used to have these fantastic posters for their movie, like Aladdin. They'd have this pastel image of a hand and a lamp, uh, you know, the beautiful like uh, things, but you never saw them when the DVDs or the movies came out. You'd see these really badly drawn, that looked like they were drawn by a child of, like a 12 year old with airbrush shading of the characters. Do you know why? Because they would put them to in front of little kids and go, which one do you like most? And they like the shitty little, the one where they could see Aladdin's face with Jasmine, no matter how badly wooden airbrush drawn it was, because it, they wanted to sell as many DVDs as they could. So which one, what was the intention? So that's what I say. So when I talk about feedback to my audience, to people who are training to be animators primarily, if you're not and you're watching my videos, thank you, welcome, glad to have you. But primarily my audience is the people looking to better themselves and develop a skill and ability in something. Then I would say surround yourself and get the feedback from people with the things that you desire to have, okay? How qualify, qualify the people that meet your standards for feedback. That is my view on that. It's not a simple case of, you know, everybody's got an opinion, everybody's, yeah, everybody, everybody has an opinion. But I mean, if you just listen to everything all the time without, without, without qualifying it, what's the point? Mute midori animations, how are you doing, hello? All uh, right, 99 minutes. Wow. Um, I know it feels like a superpower when you see their cup corners only real animators see that. Yeah. Well, yeah, it's, it's um, 
that Warner's, that Warner's thing, yeah. But you know what? I don't care. Like, as I said, like, it's difficult because I know the majority of the people I'm talking to are so much younger than me. <coughs> and it's not fair. Because when I was in my 20s and I was in my 30s, I loved to absorb the content. I loved to see, uh, watch things. I loved to know, oh, they've made a new Warner Brothers. Oh, they've made a new this. And here you've got this, this 42-year-old guy going, I don't care about... Um, awesome, awesome, yeah. Eric, I don't care about uh, what they make. You should care about what you're making. You should only care about your own animation. Uh, let's make a miserable face, an old drum. You should only care about what you're doing, not what anybody else is doing. I know. It's, it's, you know, even though that's, I believe in that, at your age, that's going to be that's difficult. You're, 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 you're inspired by what's out there, and you should be inspired by what's out there. You should be enjoying it, you know. But my, when you listen to what I'm suggesting, I'm suggesting perhaps enjoy it a little less and shift some of that focus onto what's in your imagination, onto your, your dreams, your ambitions, your aspirations, your goals, your desires. And imagine closing your eyes and really seeing the things that you're creating moving in your head like that finished thing. And if that could just have a little bit of that passion that you're putting into the products being created by Warner Brothers, Disney or Marvel or whoever. Disney and Marvel, one in the same. Sorry, just want to antagonize the comic book fan. <laughs> but if you just throw some of that passion and energy that you're spending talking about that stuff into your own stuff, you would be so much happier because you would be so much more to be, be actually closer to being a real creator, like somebody who's actually putting, getting stuff done and putting stuff out there. So perhaps I'm too much the extreme of the other side. I'm aware of that. I'm aware that it's, it's, it's not healthy to completely shut yourself away from all the new things coming out. So I do keep an eye and I do watch things, but I'm not motivated. I just don't want to watch them. I just think I'm reworking on my seat. Good for you. Good for you, Mute Midori Animations. It's like, it just does, doesn't inspire me. To me, it's a lot of hard work to sit down and watch something, even if it's something that made by somebody I respect. I'm just getting itchy. I'm just thinking, I want to make my own thing. I want to draw my own thing. I want to do some drawing now. I want to, I want to go and do some drawing. I'm getting, I'm getting bored. I'm getting fed up. I can't, like, it's difficult. Um, so it's a balance. It's a balance. Right, we've made the 103 minute mark now, which is amazing because normally I'd, I sit here for a long time, but boy, I've really sat and, and, and nattered away. Um, it's been a long time coming, but thank you to the guys who sent me those messages. If anybody else has any interesting topics that they'd like to me to cover in these little get togethers and these little sit downs, I'm quite happy doing them. Um, I'm quite happy just um, spending some time with you guys and making these videos and hanging out and uh, sharing our views uh, on on uh, on uh, animation and art and even exercising and training and how to be happy and, and all those kind of things. Um, it's absolutely... Tools would be a nice topic. Uh, I'm not the right person. You're talking to somebody who just refused a free subscription to TV Paint. So there you go. <laughs> Someone said they're level in the field. They don't need more information. They need specific information. That's why AMB doesn't want or need to watch a movie. Um, I kind of missed that. But anyway, I'm kind of like, you can hear it in my throat. I've kind of like, I've kind of like run, 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 we've run to the end of the, I've been walking the, and I just walked my favorite restaurant and they're reopened. Well, I, well, hopefully that's a good thing. Hopefully that's a good thing. Would you animate with crayons? Personally, no, but if you'd like to, then go ahead and do it. Um, there are no rules, you know, uh, I remember animating a Johnny Bravo uh, Cartoon Network sting for Cartoon Network UK. 
and we animated Johnny Bravo and the Powerpuff Girls um, in with a big fat uh, black pen to get the big fat cleanup line. I was like, what? We need to do pencil. What are you doing animating in a marker pen? She said, no, I'm animating in a marker pen because it was all for a thing for Cartoon Network and it was all kind of shaky and boiling and all that kind of thing. I was 20, 21, 22 at the time. It was the same studio that uh, was doing Eight Crazy Nights. Um, but uh, I digress anyway. And on that note, uh, it's been absolutely amazing hanging out with you guys. Thanks so much. Thank you, audience. I mean, it's funny. I've got, got more people watching watching AMB uh, talking away on this uh, dirty white wall <laughs> behind me than I have um, on some of my live streams. Um, what would make you absolutely miserable? <laughs> save it for another live stream. Okay, save it for another live stream. Okay, people, thanks a lot. I'm going to go now. I uh, love you all. I'm going to end with one of my favorite um, uh, sayings that I, I, I think I will end on all of these ones, which is do your work, not just your work, uh, but that little more, that little bit more for the lavishing sake, that little bit more, which is worth all the rest. And if you doubt as you must, if you suffer as you must, do your work. Put your heart into it and the skies will clear. And then from your very doubt and your very suffering, shall be born the supreme joy of life. Keep working hard, everybody. Much love to you all, and I'll see you on the next AMB live stream uh, behind the desk and in front of the camera. See you later. Bye-bye.